All right, guys, uh, we're getting into chapter five here and getting into energy. Lesson 5.1 is potential and kinetic energy one. We're going to spend several lessons on this, obviously, here. So uh, here's the equations, PE, potential energy, MGH. And that's actually gravitational potential energy because there are different types. There's, you know, compressing a spring and, you know, potential energy is another big one. There is like potential energy in gasoline, you could say, but this one is just based on, hey, if we lift something off the ground, it has potential energy, so height. And then kinetic energy is pretty is always going to be one half mv squared. Okay, so your examples are going to say draw out a scenario like somebody dropping uh, something off from a certain height. So if you want to draw this out here, I have a 20 meter cliff. And then a three kilogram rock, and this guy is going to drop it, and we're going to look at the energy at different points. Okay, and specifically, I'm going to look at the energy at three points. When he first drops it, um, at 10 meters, and then at the ground, or just before it hits the ground, actually, is really what this is. Okay, right before it hits the ground. So it kind of goes back to chapter one, but really this is going to be easier than what we did in chapter one with uh, acceleration and stuff, because we're just going to use these energy equations. So let's look at this MGH. Mass is three kilograms. G is 9.8. I'm not worried about the negative because with energy, we're not worried about negatives and positives. It's just a scalar, we say. it doesn't. Have, it's not a vector. And then H, 20 meters. Okay, 588. Units on energy is joules. I mean, it's going to be a kilogram meter, actually these meters, or it's going to be a kilogram meter squared per second squared is actually what it is. But we just write, that's simplified to a joule. Okay, KE, since it didn't start moving yet, is just zero. Right? We're assuming it just got dropped. It has not, does not have any velocity, zero. Let's look at the ground next. What happens when it gets to the ground? Well, your PE, I mean, it's still MGH, but your H is zero, right? So it's got no potential energy once it gets to the ground. Okay, but assuming no energy is lost, all the total energy that it started with needs to equal the total energy that it ends with. So in other words, I don't need to calculate out the speed here like I did in chapter one. I can just say, hey, it's going to have 588 joules of kinetic when it gets to the ground. Assuming no energy is lost. In other words, no air resistance. Okay, if it's at this halfway point, if we calculate it out, we could do MGH, um, 3 kilograms times uh, 9.8 times 10, right? meters. Okay, that comes out to 294 joules. Okay, well, guess what? The total of these two here, the total energy has to equal the total energy at the beginning. So in other words, I can say, okay, out of that 588 minus off the 294 here, well, if it's halfway, that's actually going to come out to 294 joules again. So it's half potential and half kinetic here. By the time it gets to the ground, it's all turned to kinetic. But the total of these has to be the same at any spot if energy is conserved. Okay, so no energy lost Okay, to air resistance is what we're assuming. Okay, let's look at a ramp. That's the other type of problem you'll have. Let's say it's a 45 degree ramp. Again, those ramp ones from a few chapters ago were kind of a pain. This is going to be easier because it's pretty simple equations we got to deal with. Let's say it's a 20 meter tall ramp, just to keep it consistent here. And we've got this cart starting at the top. It's sliding down. Let's, let's still just go halfway. On your homework, you might have to go like a quarter of the way down or a third, but just to keep these notes pretty short. Let's look at just cutting it in half. 
and saying, hey, what's the kinetic and potential here? What's the potential and kinetic here? And then what's the potential and kinetic here? Okay, so if this is 20, this is obviously like, I don't know, around 30, I guess, in that ballpark, this side here. But if we calculate this out, when I say H, I'm talking about the vertical height here still. So in other words, use the 20 for H. Don't use this length, use this straight up. So really, you can see it's going to come out the same as it did up above because I made it easy for me times 20 again. Okay, so it's still, in this case, 588 joules. If we if it has no speed here at the top, zero joules. Now you could have pushed it up here or something, added energy, but in this case, we're saying, let's say it's released from rest, sliding down. When it gets to the bottom, again, assuming no energy is lost to friction, which is pretty unlikely, but um, let's say it's totally frictionless, then our potential is at zero, right? We could calculate it out, but your height would be zero. So zero times anything is zero. My KE should be 588. Okay. And guess what? At this halfway point, what's the height going to be here? Well, by similar triangles, it's actually 10, right? So again, use that when you calculate it out. I mean, but hopefully it's pretty obvious to you that it's going to come out to be um, the same as it was up here, 294 joules. Okay, so again, this will be 294 here because these need to add up to be 588 total. Okay, um, that's kind of the big thing. I mean, I'll show you one other quick thing if you want to see this because this might help you on one of the problems. Let's say you throw something up in the air. And, you know, let's say I throw it up with a velocity of 20 meters per second. And let's say the mass is still 3 kilograms. And then let's look at maybe after 2 seconds what's going on. Okay, what's this ball doing? Okay, so what's the PE and the KE here? And then what's the PE and the KE up here after two seconds. Okay, and again, it's going to be easier than what we did before. PE, MGH, well, H is zero. This is starting out with no potential energy, assuming, we're assuming ground level is actually here. Okay, it's a little weird, but let's say this is, this is zero, where he's throwing it from. KE, let's cal calculate that out now. Remember, that's one half MV squared. 3 kilograms times 20 meter per second squared. I'm getting 600 joules. Okay, so that's the starting. Now after 2 seconds, well, I don't actually know how high it's going to be. I could figure that out, you know, using all that stuff from chapter 1, but here's an easier idea. Let's figure out how fast it's going at two seconds. Remember, this will go down by 9.8 every second. So 20 minus 9.8 minus 9.8. It's down to 0.4 meters per second. Still going upwards. So it still will have a little bit of kinetic. So let's calculate that out. Not very much, but it'll have a little bit of energy, kinetic energy, yeah. So point, point 0.5 times 3 times point 0.4 squared. I'm getting only point 0.24 joules. Okay, so you say, okay, what about potential? Well, I still don't know how high it is. How can I find potential? Well, the total energy here, right, is 600 joules. I need the total energy between these two to also be 600 joules. So in other words, do 600 minus off this 0.24, really you're left with what, 599.76, I think, joules. Okay, so the big idea again is, hey, 
the total of the potential in the kinetic here. Same as the total here. We're not losing any energy. Energy is conserved. So um, that's kind of makes it easy to do a lot of these calculations. So draw them out. Think about what you can calculate and think about what you can figure out based on the fact that energy is conserved. That's kind of the thought process for these problems. All right, see you guys.